We are live here in New York City at Microsoft's AI event. It has been an incredible event. We have seen amazing new AI technologies. We've seen new Surface PCs. It, it, the action is everywhere, and hopefully you can feel that around us. I've saw some incredible demos, some incredible stuff, GA on stuff. Daniel, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, the energy's been palpable. You yeah. can feel it here. I think everybody was kind of you know, it's like, is it going to be AI? Right. I think everybody kind of knew that was to be expected, but it was interesting because no one really knew what was coming. Exactly. And so it was that perfect blend of suspense. Right. And, you know, meeting expectations. And Pat, I, I have to say, we've been to events that have, you know, kind of fallen flat. We've been to events that kind of met the bar. And I would say in many ways, just by the reaction as analysts and looking around at the reaction, talking to press media and some of those that are here, it felt like Microsoft leaped over on this one. Yeah, I think they did. You know, they came out with that early lead and I always said, hey, this is a marathon, not a sprint. But I got to tell you, Microsoft's on fire with AI, not just for consumers, but also for folks that do work and not just folks that do work, but also for consumers. But hey, none of this amazing uh, magic tricks with software happens without uh, deep architects, super smart people architecting the future, and not just for today, but an architecture that works well into the future. And with that, uh, Stevie, welcome to the show. First time 6'5", thank you for coming on. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah, absolutely. it. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Stevie, we've seen you uh, demoing studio effects on stage in the past. Um, you know, you've got a, a big job of, of influencing how AI and the user experiences are all threaded together. But here you are at the event, both as a contributor and a, and a participant on the show. Give us a little bit of the rundown on kind of what got you really uh, fired up about today's slate of announcements. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I've been at Microsoft for about almost a quarter of a century, 25 years. I'm a technical New fellow. Guy. New guy, just yeah, I just started. Uh, I mean, you know, I kind of look it. Um, Is that and Windows um, three one one three almost no. Okay, all yeah, right. right. <laughs> That'll be kind of cool though. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, and and uh, you know, I'm a technical fellow that uh, works across both Windows and devices, and that's really important because the things that we're working on really require kind of the optimization across hardware and software to deliver the best experience that you see today. And we're really excited about the hardware capability that you saw that we're delivering, as yes. well as kind of the new co-pilot experiences that are kind of changing computing industry today. Yeah, so Microsoft is in a very unique position. It not only does it do consumer, it also does business. Yeah. But it also does devices too, yeah. with Surface, as we've seen uh, for a very long time. Uh, and that also gives you the opportunity to architect the AI in the most efficient 100%. and powerful way. Right. And maybe that's in the cloud, maybe that's in the device. And in fact, you showed today a device that had a very high performance NPU that was actually doing some of the AI magic tricks native on the device, but working with the cloud. So uh, what's the value proposition uh, to developers? Why should they be excited about this uh, moving forward? I mean, I think like the fundamental tenant in, in computing period is I want to be able to have the ability to do really high workloads, but I also need to do it in an efficient manner. And that's really hot, that's really important. And, and the phrase that we have that is called tops per watt. Yes. You know, you know, tera ops, you know, <laughs> trillions of operations per second yeah. per watt. And that's a really important metric. And those are the things that we're driving. And the things that you're seeing here today, all even if you stretch back on what we're doing with uh, the Surface Pro 9 with 5G and even yes. further back, we're changing the silicon landscape for Windows and for the industry, and it's exciting because what we're allowing to do is saying we're giving developers and also customers this computability in a small package, but it can do a lot. It's a lot of fun to watch the evolution on these devices. You know, Pat, Pat we were at, uh, we were time traveling this week. Yes. And uh, we were at the Intel innovation event yeah. and you know, Pat Gelsinger, the CEO, talked about the AI PC. 
and That's the right. NPU that you'll be using in the new studio. And as I was kind of following the story along, you kind of saw the whole story come to life this week. Yeah. Between him talking about it from the silicon layer to yeah. to the NPU, it's it's very exciting because there does seem to be a new new era, Stevie, that is going to be the AI PC. That's right. Um, so all this together starts to create this new trajectory that brings together work, that brings together our in personal lives. And to me, it seems like the, the blur is only going to get bigger. Yes. And, and we're going to have this sort of ubiquity as a, a, of our existence, and AI is going to drive a lot of this, no? Yeah, you, you know what, your comment about the AI PC is super important. I wouldn't really want to comment on yeah. that. Please. It's not really like a specific thing. It's a system. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think Satya alluded it today. Here, it's a combination of computability in the cloud along with what you have in hand. And that orchestration between compute, what's happening in the cloud, what needs to happen in the cloud, and what happens essentially on your device for privacy, security, efficiency, um, is what we're building and what we're moving towards at Microsoft. And we call this hybrid AI and a hybrid system. And this is what's going to enable kind of the next generation of co-pilot experiences. This what will allow the co-pilot to understand right. more contextually what you're trying to do and essentially help you do it. Yeah, in the end, the user really doesn't care where it's happening. They just want the best experience. Right. And for some experiences, lower latency, yes. right? And if they don't want to share certain types of information, right. they can do it on the system. Privacy. And there's another Cost. set of experiences that if they have a decent co connection, yep. maybe they're willing to wait a little. I, I think this hybrid type of architecture that brings the cloud and the client and everything yeah. in between, it's just a smart way to go. Yeah. And, and if I look at how even a lot of smartphone applications are, are, are were, were designed to be able to take advantage of the device, yeah. otherwise, I think I heard a theory 30 years ago, we were just going to be streaming uh, yeah. the entire time. Well, yeah. that didn't happen. Um, so, a ton of work has been done, and again, not just the last six months, the previous 10 years, right. in research, uh, and, but we're coming to this point though, where you're, you're delivering tangible benefits today, and that's exciting. My question for you is, what does maybe the next three to five years look like? Uh, you know, put the crystal ball out yeah, there and question. let's hear from Stevie. What does it look like? Let's use a little Bing image creator. You <laughs> yeah, can paint yeah, a picture. No. You use words <laughs> and then we'll, we'll Picasso this, this thing. It's a great question. Dolly. I mean, this is really, for, for, for a lot of us who've been in the computing industry for so long, this is really the second wind that we're entering in. Like it is, it is the thing that is like, as a significant as anything previously up to this point. And, uh, you know, Sacha talked about, you know, Doug Lingenbart and the work that happened, the um, kind of the paradigm that we've, that was established over 50 years ago with the mouse. Yeah. Like point and click, you know, very specific things. If you think about that, that's the same paradigm we've been at for the past 50 years. Yeah. And it's been very explicit, very down to the pixel, very like exact. Yeah. But this new era and what we're entering in and whether you see it with the enabled by hybrid AI and the new silicon that we're creating both in Azure and on your on your device along stitch with kind of a a, a an operating system and a system of experiences system of systems. Yeah, system of systems that's really going to essentially really going to change everything. It's going to change the application model. It's going to change how people use their applications. And I have a little bit of a frame that might help people even think about it. I call it, you know, where is the AI basically relative to your app? Is the AI beside your application? Is it inside or is it outside going across? Right. And you can see that actually happening even today. You see a lot of our co-pilot experiences essentially being complementary, sitting beside the existing application, helping you along yeah. on the side, like going back and forth and doing things. But then you see, like applications evolving, like uh, ClipChamp yes. and Designer, yes. where the AI is basically going in and infusing the application from inside out, changing the interaction model completely. Now you don't have to like do these complicated filters and go to school for four years and figure out how to do that. You're a professional automatically because the AI is inside the app. Right. 
And then the final thing, what I'm most excited about, and per your question, where I'm seeing things are going, is where the AI essentially is orchestrating not just the individual tasks that you're working on, but the but your jobs, what you need to do across yeah. multiple things, yes. across multiple devices, across multiple applications. And the best orchestrator of all is Windows itself, <laughs> isn't for, it? Well, for billions of people it for is. For billions of people <laughs> it is, right? The thing that is sitting there that allows a vessel for work to be done yeah. across many, many applications, both the amazing first party apps that we're developing, along with a third party apps. Well, and I do That's love, well, I do love too in Windows how you have enabled to bring that data and bring usability in from the smartphone, right? You That's take right. a picture on your smartphone right. and in about 15 seconds, it magically shows up inside of Windows Photos. Yeah. Or I can even uh, use the phone app, which allows me to, to send texts right. and images back and forth and you know, on, on certain phones, I mean, I can even run applications that are on my smartphone, right. on my Surface or any Windows yeah. PC. So right. that, it, only now do I see how important and strategic that was to do that. Because right. quite frankly, and, and Dan, you, you said this before, people fundamentally don't want 17 different experiences across multiple devices. Now the reality is, just like we've seen in enterprise with there is no single pane of glass, uh, people, there are going to be primary uh, co-pilots and specialty co-pilots uh, that do that. The skills, right? And, and I think ultimately that the intelligence Stevie's talking about, we can get to the point where we interact in natural language with maybe as few as a single digital assistant that will be able to eventually talk to all the systems. And I do think that's where it ends up. Right. I think there's a lot of schema and organization and experience things someone like him <laughs> is going to be thinking about exactly. to get us there. But I mean, why w would we not want to seek ubiquity? Why would I not want to use? And Satya really did a good job in the keynote today of kind of pointing this out. The fundamental, and you did this too, the fundamental change is not, it's, it, you went from a mouse for 50 years yeah. to literally interacting with these things like we would with each other. Yeah. So we basically have the empathy and, and natural human interactions that we crave. That's right. And then we allow the machine to do what it does best. Yeah. Correct through that interface as That's opposed right. to the point and click interface, which we yeah. don't naturally do well. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trained like the you know, Homo erectus. We've stood up over 50 years to learn how to do that, but now we're back to doing it the way we do it. We talk to it and we it go, does what it does. We go from explicit to implicit, from it. being direct to exact to being fuzzy but intuitive. But that's how we are. That's, that's how right. humans are. That's how humans are. And that's why there's so much brilliance here. Yeah, I mean, I've been in this industry way too long. Uh, Windows 311, I think, 1990. And this is the first time, I think, along those continuum where the vision that was set up in the early 90s and the late 80s is actually what we're going to deliver. Like, yeah. I have line of sight uh, as to where the issues were and and why why they're there and i'm super excited uh you know for enabling uh, so many folks i mean e even folks that have a hard time using devices right uh and uh, more people can get involved more inclusivity i'm super excited about that type of future I, i'm so right i mean i think like the big opportunity for software in in these co-pilots is uh you know to, to digress a little bit, we're always on the hunt for the next computing form factor. Yeah. Like, what is the next thing? And, and I think we're, what, what we understand at Microsoft is the next computing form factor isn't a specific thing, it's a system. Yeah. Software will stitch together your experiences across anything that you want, anything that you might own, across all your devices, whether it's on your lap, in your pocket, or on your wrist. And that's the big opportunity for software in front of us. Right. Connecting those experiences, connecting that data, connecting what you need to do. Yes. And you have an agent essentially alongside you to yes. help you complete your work. That's the vision. And that Love is it. the future. Stevie, we could talk all day. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, you give a couple of analysts, someone that you know actually <laughs> theorizes at even another level, and this could end up being a two day long conversation. <laughs> it was but, fun. But it was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Let's have you back sometime soon. Appreciate it. Thank Love you. that. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of the 6.5 episodes here at 
Microsoft's AI event, New York City. Pat, it's been a lot of fun having these conversations, but we gotta go. So much fun, thanks. See you later.